everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Meet the Bishop. Today we have with us His Grace Bishop Yusuf, Bishop of the Diocese of the Southern United States and Abbot of St. Mary and St. Moses Monastery in Texas. We're happy to have you with us today, Sayyidina. Welcome. Thank you, Samuel. And I just had a couple questions to ask Your Grace. Um, what church were you born and raised in, Sayyidina? I grew up in St. Anthony Church in Sopra, Cairo. And what, what, do you have any services there once you grew up, Sayyidina? Yes, actually I served as a deacon and then as a coordinator for the deacons. Also I served as Sunday school uh, servant. Uh, I actually served all the ages from you know, the children until you know, middle school, high school, college, youth. And then I became a coordinator of the uh, primary school kids and then coordinator for the middle school. With all the different ages, Sayyidina, did you have a preference of which age group you were able to connect with more? Each group has its blessings. And uh, actually, I enjoyed serving with each group. Uh, and I learned more with each group. Uh, I learned, you know, the children, the simplicity, the innocence, uh, the purity. Uh, with the uh, youth, I learned the challenges, the debate, how uh, to convince them, how to uh, try to persuade them. So with each group, uh, there was actually a special uh, benefit for me personally. Sayyidina, when, after you finished your service in St. Anthony Church, what made you start to think about monasticism? Monasticism actually started with me when I was in high school. Uh, I visited the monasteries at Wadi and Natron uh, as a trip with the church. And I felt uh, peace during this trip. I felt uh, the simplicity of the life, but also the richness of the spirituality. I, I, I remember very well when I saw the monks with their smile. Uh, this reflect deep joy and deep peace, although they were living in the desert, and actually they have nothing. Uh, this made me long more and more to visit uh, the monasteries more frequently and spend more time there. So each vacation I started to go to the monastery and this feeling that this is my home started to grow within me. Even when I was studying, I never imagined myself that I will continue my life in the world. I felt my home is the monastery. Which monastery did you, did your grace find most comfortable? Actually, uh, I visited mainly the monasteries of uh, Wad al Natron. I used to spend time in San Bishon Monastery, Al Baramos Monastery, and uh, Surian Monastery. Uh, but at the end, uh, the last four years of my college, uh, I used to go mainly to the Surian. And that's where you decided to become a monk? Yes. When, Sayyidina, when you decided to go to the monastery and become a monk, did your family oppose you at all? Of course, yes. They opposed me uh, because, you know, I'm the only uh, son. I have uh, four sisters. Uh, and this was difficult for them to accept it at the beginning. But later on, actually, uh, God uh, intervened in a miraculous way and uh, they blessed this step. Sayyidina, when you were in charge of the Tazbaha, yani the church aspect of the monastery, what made you love the Tazbaha and teach it to us? And me personally, I learned to love the Tazbaha from doing it with your grace. How did you learn to love it and learn it all so, all so much? Uh, my love to the Tasbih Midnight Praises 
uh, or praises in general did not start when I joined the monastery. Actually, is the first time I learned Tisbih, I was in sixth grade, and I learned uh, the fourth uh, host and the Psali and the Theotokia of Saturday, which is the Vispers praises. Uh, my son's school uh, teacher, who is now actually a bishop, his grace bishop Daniel of al Maadi. Uh, actually taught us the uh, uh, Vesper praises and he encouraged us to attend and participate in it and since then actually my love to the Tisbiha and to the hymns start to grow and grow and uh, I felt a lot of comfort, consolation, joy in, 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 in praising the Lord Sayyidina, when you were in, how long were you a brother before you ordained a monk? Uh, one year and uh, four months. And then you, you got ordained a priest after you became a monk. How, how, how long was there between the monkhood and the priesthood? One year. Exactly. One, one, year, year. And one year and three months. And then after that, Sayyidina, you came, did you come straight to America? or you, you, you went to Texas first or you went to other places throughout? No, actually, my service started in uh, Texas, in Dallas. In Texas. Mm -hmm. How long was that after you became a priest? Uh, uh, one year, actually. One year. Do you remember, Sayyidina, what year exactly you came to Texas? Yeah, 1989. And, and when you came, Sayyidina, were, were there a lot of churches in Texas or in America as a whole? I remember uh, His Holiness Pope Shenouda visited America in August 1989 and he made uh, uh, like a seminar for all the clergy in North America he made two uh, meetings one in Toronto in the beginning of his visit and one in Los Angeles at the end of his visit and I remember that all the priests in uh, North America including Canada were about 30 something or 40 nothing more actually I have a picture for this meeting you know with his holiness in Texas uh, there were only three churches one in Houston one in San Antonio and one in Dallas and how many churches are there now in your diocese Sayedna? Uh, you know we have communities and we have uh, churches mm -hmm. uh, all we have 53 Churches and communities. 53, and about, or is there a priest for each church? Or? For each church, yes, and some churches has more than one priest, but the communities, no. The communities, they don't have. How many priests do you have, Sayyidina, in, in the diocese? Now, through the grace of God, we have 35 priests. 35. God bless Sayyidina. And w when you came in the beginning, there, were there anywhere near that, around, like in the southern United States area? When I came, uh, as a bishop, uh, we were nine priests. Just nine. Sayyidna, when you when you look to ordain priests, what do, what do you look for in, in the in the in the man when you look for them to ordain them? Mainly, actually, I I pray and ask God to guide me, because this is a calling from God, as Saint Paul said in his letter to Hebrews. Nobody takes this honor except he who is called from God as Aaron. So I pray and ask God to guide me to the right person. Then uh, I look at certain points. Uh, one of the most important points I look at uh, his ability to communicate and deal with the people. Because the priest all the time deals with people and he has to have the ability to communicate well and deal with different people, with the difficult people, with the easygoing people, with children, with youth, with elders. Now, this is a very, very needed uh, gift uh, in the priest. Also, I look for his zeal and his commitment to serve. As His Holiness Pope Shenouda teaches us that if we rest, the people will suffer. But if we labored, the people will rest. So uh, 
I don't like priests who are doing the service with the idea of minimum requirement. Uh, I like the priests who have creativity, they initiate a lot of services, uh, and they are willing to spend time and, and, and the labor and toil for the progress of service. Definitely not on the expense of their own families, because St. Paul told us that when the priest is successful in his own family, this is actually a sign that he can manage the Church of God well. But if he doesn't know how to manage his own family, then how he could manage the Church of God. When you first heard that you were going to be ordained a bishop, what were your first feelings? I had the feeling like King Solomon when he became a king. Is there any funny stories or anything that happened with your grace here that you'd like to share with us? Give me any visa and after the visit of his holiness, I will apply for the green card.